So for about the last five years, I've been running a professional PR firm for musicians called Two Story Media. And we've gotten hundreds of press placements for artists. And at times, I've been making a good bit of money from, from running these campaigns. But in the spring of this year, I decided that I just had to quit doing PR. In this video, I'm going to tell you why I decided to quit and what it might mean for your music. So let's get into it. So first up, as I tell this story, I think it's probably helpful to just give some background on how I got into PR and even what I mean by the term PR. So my background, as you know, if you have been on my email list or if you've been following the blog for any length of time, is that I started a blog called Two Story Melody as just a passion project when I graduated college. I was working at a marketing agency that was doing like B2B tech marketing, which I won't get into that, but there's a lot of acronyms and it's not always... In my opinion, at least it wasn't always for the most fun clients. So basically, on the side of that full-time job, I decided that I wanted to be thinking and talking about music, and I decided to just start interviewing some of my friends who were musicians about their songwriting process, because that's always what has interested me. And over the a couple of years, I interviewed people, and the blog started to just get some momentum. Like, we'd have artists reach out to us, asking if we could cover their songs. I had some people reaching out and asking if they could write for the blog in addition to me. And so things just started to grow a little bit, but I would say for the first two or three years, it was just a passion project. And then I really clearly remember the moment where it turned into like more of a business. And it was when we did an article for this artist, like we did a pretty good write-up of his song. And he reached out to me personally and he was like, hey, I really appreciated the write-up that you guys did of my song. Would you be able to help me get more articles like this? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess so. I know kind of how the process works. And I also had knew some of the other blogs that were out there that were doing similar things in the space. So I was like, yeah, I think I could. And so I reached out to some blog editors that I knew, and we got them a few more articles written in blogs like Two Story Melody, and he paid us a little bit of money, slash he paid me a little bit of money for probably more work than I would like to admit. But that was the that was the start of it being like a legitimate business. And that process is still really how I define PR. I, I've talked about this in other places, but PR is this really broad term that if you say, yeah, I do PR, people take that to mean like almost everything about marketing. I view it in this really narrow sense of PR is getting articles written about your music in magazines and blogs and things like that. So fast forward two years, I've quit my job at the old marketing agency to focus pretty much on PR. And I was running campaigns for like eight to 10 artists at a time. Um, and I was getting pretty good results. And I was also just kind of hating my life. <laughs> like the process of PR is really time intensive. So you're pitching a lot of, you're emailing a lot of people back and forth. You're emailing editors. Um, you're going back and forth with artists on deadlines for releases. So it's a lot of work. And you're also like, as the PR person, you're in this weird space where you feel like you're always reaching out and asking other people for favors, like other editors for favors. And I just found that I was not cut out to do that for a very long time. So I scaled back a little bit. I was like, okay, I can't do eight to 10 clients at once. I'll scale it down and I'll just do like three to five PR campaigns at once. And I'll be able to just do it more easily. It won't burn me out as much. Basically a year later, that was my approach. And then there came a time in the spring where I was running a PR campaign for a friend whose music I really like and who I really like as a person. And the results were pretty good. And I finished that campaign and I was like, I really didn't enjoy anything about that process. <laughs> and it was at that point that I was like, if I didn't like doing this for my friend whose music I like, who I'm doing a decent job at it, like I'm just never really going to like this. And so that was the moment where I was like, okay, I'm done doing PR because it's just not something that I enjoy doing. And I want to spend my time consistently doing things that I actually like to do. So that if I'm being honest, that's the main reason that I quit PR. But there's a second reason that I quit PR too, and honestly, it kind of feeds into that first reason. And that's that I think the role of indie PR has declined in importance over the five years that I've been doing it. So here's what I mean by that. Five years ago, like SubmitHub was just beginning to be a thing. If you're not familiar with SubmitHub, I've done videos on what it is and how it works and things like that. But the, the basic premise is that you can submit your music to blog articles to blog editors directly and they'll respond to you directly and so it kind of cuts out the whole like PR middle person you do have to pay blah 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 model is weird but submit hub is a new thing so five or six years ago blogs were transitioning to submit hub and Groover and Muso Soup and things like that but it was still in the transitionary period where the value of a PR person was that they knew all these blog owners and editors and they would reach out to them directly now in my mind there are three types of music blogs you have the bedroom blogs and that's people who 
like it's a little it's me when I started out it was a passion project they're literally just writing in their bedroom about music they like it's just them they own the site maybe it's on like tumblr or wix or something but it's just a passion project that's the bedroom blog at the next level up you have the mid what I consider the mid tier and it's like a little bit more developed than the bedroom blog it's like I would consider two story melody my blog now to be an, a mid tier blog there's maybe a team of writers um, there might be an editor beside yourself but it's still just you like you're not it's not part of this big media conglomerate it's just it's a passion project that's basically scaled up to a thing that people in the industry know and has been in existence for a period of time and then the top level of the blog world are these big publications like pitchfork rolling stone billboard stereogum american songwriter like these big publications that if you're in the music industry you've probably read them at some point everyone kind of knows of them knows of them and most of these publications are owned by media conglomerates. So like if you go to American Songwriter and you scroll down to their footer, you'll see like American Songwriter is owned by a company that owns a bunch of websites and media properties across like this wide range of things. So it's not just American Songwriters in someone's basement. It's like a real company. And so here's what happened with the rise of Submit Hub is that all those bedroom blogs, all of those mid-tier blogs, I would say like 80% of them or more migrated over to submission platforms like Submit Hub, like Groover, like Muso Soup, because they get paid to review music. And that's an easy incentive. And meanwhile, those media conglomerate sites like Billboard, American Songwriter, whatever else, those run on ad revenue to the sites. So they're literally driven by traffic. And the thing with indie songwriters is that if you write an article on some upcoming indie artist, it doesn't bring in a lot of traffic. If you write an article on Ed Sheeran's new album, it brings in a lot of traffic. And so those media conglomerate sites are incentivized to cover the bigger artists, and they're not really incentivized to cover the indies. So the takeaway from all of this is that most of the indie PR can be done effectively on Submit Hub on these submission platforms, and most of the higher level PR is hard to do for indies because those media conglomerates aren't as incentivized to cover upcoming artists. And that is a shift that's happened in the last five years that's just made indie PR a lot harder. All right, so let's bring it back to what this might mean for your music. So first of all, I would say if you are an upcoming indie artist, you probably should not be paying an agency for PR unless you have like a really good crystallized story or some really good reason that somebody would want to write about your art. And honestly, the, the just the kind of mean truth here is that most people don't have that, especially when they're starting out. So instead of paying an agency, I would run just a campaign on Submit Hub or Groover or something like that, and I would get a few press pieces because those are still nice pieces of social proof about your work. It's nice to hear people write nice words about your work, but you probably shouldn't be spending thousands with a PR agency yet. Now, there will come a time when it is worthwhile to pay a PR agency, and that's when those people can get you those higher-level placements where your story would actually be interesting to a media conglomerate or interesting to some of those mid-tier, upper-mid-tier blogs that a PR agency might have connections with because that's essentially what you are paying for with a PR firm is the connections they have. The whole point of a PR firm is that when they email the person, the person who they're emailing sees the name in the inbox and knows who it is, so they'll respond and they get higher response rates because they have relationships. That's why you pay a PR firm rather than doing it yourself. And that's still totally worthwhile in the right context. There are a lot of good PR firms out there. I really like Don from Fresh Press PR. Uh, I like James from Independent Music Promotions. There's also Cyber PR, Ariel Hyatt. There's bigger level stuff like Shorefire. There's a ton of good firms out there. I actually have an article running over some of the best PR firms for artists. But basically, it's still a role to play in the world. I just think that the role of indie PR is less than it was five years ago. And it's also, I think, harder to do well as an agency. And if I'm being honest, the real reason that I got out of PR, like I said at the outset, was that I just did not enjoy it anymore. So there you go. All right. I hope this discussion of indie PR was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I also have a resource that'll help you use Submit Hub effectively if you are interested in doing that for yourself. I had a conversation with Dylan, who's like a customer success guy over there. And we talked through, here's the best filters and the best ways to use Submit Hub to actually get coverage of your music. So you can download that. I'll put the link to that in the description. So yeah, as of 2023, indie PR is not dead, but I... John Anderson am dead to indie music PR. And those are the reasons why. Hope it's helpful and good luck out there.